All right, guys. So in this video, I went back and got the USMLE outline for the for the step exams, and it in there it does say that you need to know this uh, you know population uh, genetics per se. And so what I did is I tried to create this question geared toward that. There's four terms that they use in this outline, so I made sure that we uh, use all four and uh, make sure that you're familiar with them before you walk into your exam. So I'll play the video, guys. All right, guys, so it says, in the mid-1800s, a small population of a church group moved to the southwest United States to start their own religion. The group were isolated from outside influences for many years. Their practices include endogamy, or marrying within the religion, as well as taking several wives. The founders were unaware that they carried a severely detrimental allele that caused mitochondrial impairment in subsequent generations. The higher incident of this specific genetic condition caused by the practices of this religion are known as which of the following. Okay, so this is kind of a, a, obviously a genetics, uh, population genetics type of question. And you can see by the answer choices, they're wanting to know based on this, uh, you know, based on these actions, which most closely identifies the description. So you have natural selection, bottleneck effect, founder effect, mutation selection, equi equilibrium, and Hardy-Weinberg law. Now, these are pretty much all mentioned, for the most part, these, you know, in that outline of the content of the USMLE. So let's review these real quick, and then, I, then we can apply it to the question, okay? So the one that most people always look at is Hardy-Weinberg, right? Because it's all, all that, uh, there's always some math involved. But for now, we're just looking at the definition of it. So, but if you start with Hardy uh, Weinberg, it gives you a good idea of where these other ones kind of come from. Because in Hardy Weinberg, they make a lot of assumptions, right? They make five basic assumptions that there's no mutation, okay? There's no mutations, uh, there's no random uh, mating, there's no uh, gene flow, there's no uh, selection, okay? And there's an infinite. Uh, population size. So those are three basic assumptions, and I'm not saying you really got to memorize all those, but you got to know that Hardy-Weinberg is kind of, uh, it, it works well like uh, in the science lab because there's no, um, it's all perfection. There can be none of these variations for Hardy-Weinberg uh, to, to really uh, work out, right? Because it's all based on math, but it makes these huge assumptions that none of this occurs. But we know that in reality, a lot of this stuff does occur, okay? So then you break Hardy-Weinberg. If this doesn't work, now we already know that this question has some flaws in it, right? Because we're talking about this mitochondrial impairment. So it automatically says uh, it can't apply to Hardy-Weinberg. So we're going to get rid of him right out, right out of the gate. But if Hardy-Weinberg doesn't work, you got to be thinking this, okay? I want you to think natural uh, selection. And, or, uh, oops, I'm going to say there's no selection, so you should be thinking natural selection right there. Or this infinite population size, I want you to be thinking the word uh, genetic drift, okay? So if hardy Warmberg doesn't work because of the very, because it doesn't apply to all any of these, you got to be thinking natural selection or genetic drift. Now, natural selection. Now, this is, you think, like the whole Darwin thing, right? Um, it's selective selective uh, pressure okay meaning for our you know people or our species to survive you know these things need to occur just by the genetic genetic kind of makeup over a long period of time uh, you'll start to see these new kind of kind of traits and this is mainly positive right because it happens over it's, it's more of a, a selection process in order to survive and it happens over a long time mainly positive okay now genetic drift a little bit different this is what they call more of a micro uh, evolution okay much shorter period of time okay natural selection long genetic drift shorter and this could be either positive you know or negative okay positive or negative but I want you to break genetic drift down into two things and this is the end of it so don't, don't worry it's not gonna get too much deeper than this Genetic drift into two, two things. I want you to look at, it's called founder effect. Okay, founder effect, or it's gonna be called the bottleneck. Bottleneck effect. Okay, now, 
when we when we say like a uh, a founder effect, that's when somebody you know you got a population, and then these the group of people move away from that population. Yet when they went away, it just so happens that they carried a certain amount of uh, genetic uh, kind of traits that then kind of grew from that population. So that that's what would be called the founder effect. Now when you see bottleneck effect, that means basically. Uh, I want you to think like if people, like for some reason, whether there, there was a, a war or there was just something that killed off a certain um, uh, uh, phenotype or genotype, you know, within that, within that set, and therefore, you know, it no longer presented itself, okay? That's what the, the bottleneck effect, so when you think of people dying, uh, war, or something just being killed off, and then that kind of, kind of eliminated that little uh, part of it. So... Again, Hardy-Weinberg makes a lot of assumptions, no mutations, no randomness, no gene flow, no selection, and, uh, uh, you know, infinite uh, population size, if, and that's just not reality. So if these don't occur, you need to be thinking natural selection, more Darwin, long period of time, or genetic drift, you know, moving away from the population, and you're going to have, you're going to see those terms, founder effect and bottleneck effect. So back to this question. You got this group of people who kind of separated themselves from their religion. They went to a different part of the country, okay? They started kind of marrying within, per se, and due to these practices, they carried this, um, they carried a, an allele, kind of got expressed more and more often um, due, to, due to these behaviors that cause a mitochondrial impairment, okay? So what would this be known as? You know, is this natural selection? You know, was this something that over a long period of time Evolutionary-wise, that made things, you know, mainly positive or anything. No, it mainly kind of more negative. If anything, more inbreeding. So it's, we're going to eliminate the natural selection. Now, bottleneck effect. Did it, it, it were people like kind of like uh, more so dying off per se that that caused this, or was this just something that kind of you know kind of just became more apparent, in more of a negative way, but became more apparent due to the behaviors, and it's people really weren't. You know, I can't say they really weren't dying off because obviously we don't really mention that in here. But is there a better explanation for what occurred here? Yes. It's going to be C, the founder effect, all right? Heck, I even put that word in there. I shouldn't have done that. But it's more of when someone moves away from a population and then all of a sudden you get more genetic, uh, you know, kind of characteristics from that, you're going to be thinking founder effect. Uh, and then the, this mutation selection equilibrium, we'll talk in a second, that just basically says... You know, hey, look, uh, from the species perspective, if you got something that comes in that's a bad trait, either it, and it gets eliminated because of death or something, yet you still have that trait kind of in the species due to perhaps like a mutation, uh, de novo, uh, there's like a balance in there. And that's called the mutation selection equilibrium. And that's not what this kind of talks about. And of course, we talked about Hardy Warnberg. So the, the only answer for this one is going to be uh, founder effect. Now, could they have put genetic drift as an answer choice? Yes, but that would have been too confusing since founder effect is more underneath that. So for right now, I just want you to understand Hardy-Weinberg. If it doesn't work, you better be thinking natural selection or genetic drift, those terms. And under genetic drift, you know, microevolution, I want you to think founder effect and bottleneck effect. This one reads, the northern elephant seals have reduced genetic variation as a result of overhunting that occurred in the 1890s. The hunting reduced their population size to as few as 20. Their population has since rebounded, though they now have much less genetic variation as compared to the southern elephant seals who were not hunted as intensely. The difference, the difference, the different genetic variation between the two groups of seals is best explained by which of the following. So again, you see all these type of, of answer choices. You better be thinking Hardy Weinberg, and there's five criteria for that, right? No mutation, no random uh, mating, no gene flow, no sele you know, no selection, and infinite population size. If Hardy Weinberg does not is not appropriate, which it's not in this one because there was a variation, right? There's a genetic variation, so Hardy Weinberg's off the table. Uh, you better be thinking what? Natural selection, and we said that's going to be more. Uh, over a long period of time, there's selective pressure for these changes to occur, and typically it's it's more positive. Now, was this uh, over a long period of time? No, it appears that it was very short, evolutionary uh, time-wise speaking. And was it selective pressure? No, it was kind of forced pressure, if anything. So not so much natural selection, but you got to be thinking like that.
And then over here, if it's, you better be thinking genetic drift, you know, but did those people move away from the, the core population? Was there a small subset that moved away? Um, I don't know, you know, and it, it didn't really say that in this, but we gotta, go, we gotta keep going, you know. There is a variation from the bigger picture, but so genetic drift will break down into two, what two? We said there's a founder effect, is when these guys kinda uh, say themselves move away uh, from the population and they bring some of their, their um, recessive or different characteristics with them and those become more prominent or you're gonna get this thing called bottleneck effect alright and what do we say on that one we said you better be looking for things when they uh, characteristics when they die or war so in this situation you had all these these this group of elephant seals. Now they were, you know, hunted, all right. And the ones that remained, you know, very few may have had certain characteristics. And of course, when they kind of bred together, uh, there was less genetic variation as compared to the different group of, you know, the southern elephant seals. So this is best explained from what? Which of these is it? Natural selection? Not so much. Uh, bottleneck effect? Yeah, it's gonna be that bottleneck effect, right? Uh, and then mut mutation selection again. Uh, that's again. There is a. Uh, you know, we'll get to that in actually just a second. I want to steal the thunder on it. Uh, but the best answer, the only answer for this one, is going to be that bottleneck effect. But again, your take-home point. I want you to know, Hardy Weinberg means it's got to be a utopian perfection. You know, no mutation. Da 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 da. Um, if not, you better be thinking natural selection. Over a long period of time, selective pressure usually has a positive outcome, a positive reason for it to occur. Genetic drift, they move away from the population. Two subsets, founder effect and then uh, bottleneck effect. And when you think of that bottleneck effect, I've seen these kind of graphs and, you know, anything's fair game on these step exams. I mean, they can get kind of um, really out there with their questions. But say you had this right here where it was, uh, you know, think about this. Like, here's the population up here. And then all of a sudden, say you got rid of this trait, right? You got rid of this trait, and which ones remained? These. That's an example of the bottleneck effect. And I've seen that kind of drawing, uh, not so much in a question yet, uh, but just be aware, again, bottleneck effect. And then our last one here. It says, Tay-Sachs is an autosomal recessive disease in, human be in humans that has a frequency of, you know, this, assuming random mating. The frequency of Tay-Sachs allele Q is about this. Tay-Sachs sufferers usually die within two years. Supposing there is a selection against uh, the deleterious uh, uh, allele, the mutation would thought to be lost, okay? And again, uh, uh, that goes back to, you know, if, uh, say there was some type of gene in the gene pool and everybody's like, no, man, I'm not gonna have a kid with you. Uh, you know, you think it'd be gone, but what happens? However, new alleles arise by mutation, you know, out of the randomness, right? Just uh, de novo, whatever you want to call it. The balance between what comes in, the mutation, and what goes out, the choice of not selecting that person, is best explained by which of the following. Now, and we talked about, you know, Hardy-Weinberg, natural selection, genetic drift, founder effect, bottleneck effect. We know those. But there's a balance between, um, you know, the, the selection of, of people in, you know, uh, that by not choosing to, say, have children per se, or they die off ahead of time, you think that eventually that that would be removed from the genetic pool. But what happens? You get uh, these, these uh, de novo or randomness or they're just these mutations that occur, and so it, it brings it back in. But in there, there's a balance, right? There's a balance. And that balance is going to be called what? The mutation selection equilibrium, okay? So again, take home point, guys. Hardy-Weinberg, it's perfection. If it doesn't work, I want you to be thinking natural selection or genetic drift. And underneath genetic drift, if, if they don't give you these two extra choices, I want you to think genetic drift. But you better be thinking founder effect or bottleneck effect. And then if the balance between what comes in and out is also being known as mutation selection equilibrium. Okay, guys? Hope this was helpful. Mm -hmm.